Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to go over a little review. We're actually going to be adding to an assignment that we did last week, so uh, please pay attention when I tell you that the beginning students, so our beginning students, I'll just put BEG for beginning, you guys had eight total boxes on this assignment. You had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the advanced students had nine boxes and the formation was a little bit more complicated for advanced. So if you're advanced, this assignment will apply to you in the same way, um, but the demonstration is going to be on a beginning assignment. So um, let's review a little bit. We have a horizon line here. We have a vanishing point in the center. And all the diagonals from the shapes converge to the vanishing point. So a couple things I want to note here. If you got a bad grade on this assignment when, we, when you first turned it in, you need to repair or fix all of your mistakes before you turn it in because I will still take points off if we have parallels and diagonals that are not adjusted uh, per the recommendations on my corrections. So um, here on this example here we have a rectangle has three diagonal lines converging to the vanishing point and then the lines that create depth are parallel to the front of the original shape. So I'm going to show this by dragging my ruler over and connecting it from one diagonal to the other. Okay, now this is a crucial piece of information for this course. All of you guys are expected to master this. It will continue to come up in assignments throughout the year, so it's really important that if you need help, you reach out. I apologize for my absence today. It was unexpected. Um, I will be able to give extra help again on Thursday. So. If you need a little extra help uh, after 12.30 on Thursday, just shoot me an email and we can have an office hour link sent out so that you can join me for some reteaching. So this box here is on the line. It gets two diagonals that go to the vanishing point. We did them freehand. I'm using my ruler just to show, to reteach. And now we have to figure out the line that creates depth. Okay, so when we're talking about a shape, it typically has height which is perpendicular to the horizon line. It has width, and then it has depth, which is an illusion that we're creating on a flat paper, just showing that it goes back into space. So everything that we do in this class is going to be creating illusions on paper. So it's really important that you understand these three dimensions and that you're able to manipulate them throughout the year. So I'm gonna go freehand now without the ruler. I'm gonna go here to this rectangle in review diagonals from the corners exactly to the vanishing point. Notice that my pencil is super sharp. Definitely keep yours super sharp. So I'm looking at the side of the shape that it starts from. I look between the two diagonals that come from that shape and then I place a line that is exactly the same angle. So in this case it's exactly vertical to the line that it came from. So this side here belongs to this ori original shape. Now the bottom here is flat and parallel to the horizon. Then anything extra that I don't need gets erased. I put this one here on purpose so that you could see how it disappears behind this box. Okay, I can still see that you know something if you get one part of it right, but another part disappears behind something else. So, for example, this angle here is not exactly parallel, nor is it vertical to the horizon. This is called a diagonal. So the line that creates depth needs to be on the exact same angle as the side from the original shape in which it came from. So if I were to go and draw the opposing line that's parallel to the other side, part of it would disappear behind this box, but you can see a small segment comes out, so what I'll do is I'll erase the pieces that go through that box so it looks like it's layered. And now we have an illusion of a third dimension on that particular shape, as well as an illusion that one form is layered on the other. This is a square, it's on the horizon line and it has two diagonals connecting to the vanishing point. 
because of its position in relation to the vanishing point. So it's right on the line, and in, the, in those cases, most often, there are only two diagonals. So we go back to the original shape, and again, we're talking about shape, an enclosed line. This one creates a square. We're going to drop a vertical because we know that the original shape had a vertical that was exactly perpendicular to the horizon line. So we're erasing the extra pieces. And now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five forms that are either on or above the horizon. Now below the horizon line, I'm going to do this freehand again, so this is what you were asked to do with your first assignment. You are going to connect from the corners to the vanishing point, practicing your coordination, holding far back on the pencil, turning the paper if necessary to create nice straight diagonals that go straight from the outermost edge of your original shape, in this case these are corners, to the vanishing point. So this is a vertical line. It also creates the shape's height. The next line that I am going to draw is a vertical line that creates the shape's depth. So I know that because this vertical line intersected this diagonal, that is the starting point for the horizontal line that creates the depth on the top. I'm going to erase all these extra pieces, and I'm going to quickly move on to this shape. You'll notice that a lot of you are thinking, yes, I already did this, I already know this, that's good. In that case, you are exactly where you need to be. If you guys are still struggling with this a little bit, I would highly suggest at this point seeking extra help, either from me or for, from a peer. So a lot of you know this, but if you haven't created a free Zoom account to host your own study group meetings, I would suggest that, of course, with your parents' permission. But having study groups is pretty essential to making sure that you guys make it through this online learning situation. So if you can find a way to collaborate, even though you're not together, that would be advised. All right, so this is our eighth and final shape for this assignment. We have a vertical side to this three-dimensional rectangle. I'm going to make a vertical side of depth. Again, this line has to be the exact same angle as the side that it came from. The intersection point of the diagonal tells you where the last and final depth mark occurs. Then we go back and we erase any extra pieces. So here's where it gets a little tricky. So here is your assignment for this week. You guys are going to take your value knowledge. So we did have an assignment where you created a value scale and we are going to number these values out and apply them to our three-dimensional forms to learn about light. So light is the only reason that we can see anything. This particular representation of light is called a value scale. It shows the difference between light and dark. Beginners are expected to have eight levels of value and advanced as many as 16. For this assignment advanced, you guys have nine boxes, and I want to see a minimum of nine values being used. The way that you do this, for those of you that are new to drawing, is you imagine a light source. So to keep it consistent so that I can evaluate it, what I would like you to do is use your vanishing point as your imaginary light source. So we are not going to draw anything here. We're not going to draw a sun. We're just going to imagine that the light is coming right from the center and shining on all these objects. So we're thinking about the light shining on all of these boxes. So this one is the closest to the vanishing point. So this one's going to have some really bright light on it. What I would suggest is numbering them. So I'm looking at my value scale saying, OK, this side of this form is going to get the lightest possible value because it's the closest. And I'm going to keep this entire side represented as the lightest value on my page. This side of the box is still close to that light source. And it needs a value, and that value needs to be light. So I'm going to assign 
the number 2 value to this entire side. We are not blending values on the side of these forms. When you assign a value, for example I assign 2 to this side, this entire side gets nothing but value 2. I don't want any value 3 or 4 or anything else on that side. It needs to be solid in value 2. You can notice that since I've been working here, I'm getting a bit of smudging on my reference scale. <clears throat> it's a good idea that if that be happening to you, especially while you're doing this assignment, you use another piece of paper to block. All right, so thinking about the light source being here, if this side is all one, this side is all two, this side here may be three or four. You're the artist, you get to choose. I'm going to choose three because this box is so close to the light source. So referencing your value scale, you're gonna pick a value and you're going to assign that exact value without showing any marks, no lines. We're using the edge of our graphite to fill in those sides of those boxes completely. Okay, so we're going to go slow and we're going to do it as perfect as possible. Okay, so I want you guys to really, really think this through. Okay, if a box is further away from the light source, it doesn't mean that it has no light. It just means that it has less light than the one that's closest to it. So as you're moving around your page and you're making decisions, you need to keep in mind that you only have eight values as a beginner, unless of course as a beginner you want to reach a little further and you want to apply 16, that's okay. It's just not okay to do less. So your collection of forms needs to represent all eight values and all eight of them needs to be carefully done. And the only lines that I want to see on this paper are the ones that created the verticals, horizontals, and diagonals on your boxes. Okay, Ideally, those will also disappear if your shading is really excellent. So as you are moving around, you can see that I'm applying a value 3 to this side. When I get it nice and even, I've already determined that this bottom side is going to be solid, and it's going to be my ones, one scale. So I'm not going to put anything there because my 1 has nothing, but I am going to apply the 2. So as an artist, if you should find that your edge has disappeared, so for me that's this edge, this little line here, is really not really a step up from 2, I'm going to have to lift 3 a little bit and raise it so that I didn't lose the corner of my form. Okay, so I'm not going to outline it, since I've raised this value, I have to raise that entire side. So no blending. We're going to raise that entire side all the way up to where it makes sense in relation to number two. So notice that I am holding pretty far back on my pencil. I'm not holding up close because I'm not doing any detail work yet. And I'm not afraid to use my eraser to clean up something that doesn't look of good craftsmanship. So. It's really important that you learn in this class that if you throw something at me and it looks like you could have cleaned it or you could have done something extra but you just didn't, then your grade is going to be marked down because craftsmanship is really important. So what I am looking for in this assignment is that number one, all the diagonals are correct, all the parallels are correct. And then finally, all of the values are relatively correct in relation to the light source, which is coming from your vanishing point. So I'm going to talk you through the rest of it because if I had you walk, or if I had you watch me shade every single one of them, it would be a really, really long video. So this one here, I would say, starting with a four on this side and going to perhaps a 6 on this side would make sense. Keeping in mind this is a little farther away, I started with 1 here so I'll go with a 2, a 4, and probably a 6. Okay, I'm writing the numbers there so you can get an idea for your objective. Here I'm looking at 
probably a three. On this side here, a five. I'm really feeling like this is the furthest away. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is my furthest shape, darkest one. So I'm gonna give this the eight. I'm gonna determine that now so I can make sure and hit that objective. This is a seven, this is a six. Right here, I'm looking at a seven. This one, a four. This one, a four, six. And here, I'm looking at maybe somewhere between a four or five more than likely. This one, four. This one I feel is going to be darker because this one is blocking light from it. So I think it's going to be even darker than this side. So I'm going to put a seven here. And here at the bottom I'm going to leave it alone and I'm going to be one. Now keep in mind I made all of these decisions by thinking about the light logically. Yours are not necessarily going to be the same as mine. You're going to make the decisions about the light and you're going to think about which side should be the lightest in relation to the light coming from the middle. Now all of your shapes you drew in a slightly different area because you're slightly different people. So keep that in mind. Everyone's paper should be unique and each side of each form needs to have a solid applied value. So I should not see any blending happening on any sides. That will make your forms disappear and they will not look three-dimensional when it's all said and done. Also, do not write your numbers on your boxes like I did. You will spend forever trying to cover up your numbers. You'll want to note them outside like I did when I first started shading my first form. Okay, So I only wrote these here so you could follow me mentally. You will not want to write your numbers on these boxes. You'll want to note them out on the outside and keep that box free so that you can fill it with value. Okay. So you guys are going to be turning this in at 3.30 on your last class meeting this week. So obviously if you started class on Tuesday, I'll see you on Thursday. So for those of you that started on Tuesday, it is due Thursday at 3.30. If you have me on Wednesday this week, this will be due on Friday at 3.30. You guys of course owe me a journal for today. Um, beyond that, I'll make the announcement for the Artist of the Week when I get back. Thanks a lot. Hope you guys have a good day. Um, if you guys need anything, just shoot me an email. Bye-bye.